Hi, and welcome back to Yasa Rose Early Learning. I am Corbella Guy. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Good to see everyone. Now, we've been having these daily chats about early literacy skills. And some of my videos are targeted to my parents who are either homeschooling or looking to support their children's reading at home. And some are targeted to my teachers. Today's video is for my teachers. Um, this, this is just a, a rundown of a blog post I have on my website that gives you some fun ideas. I know we get to a point in the school year <laughs> and I know you're getting there. I remember this, um, where you're starting to struggle for ideas for your lessons, right? And your kids are getting antsy, everybody's waiting for spring break, and then that final push to the end of the school year. Trust me, I remember. But here are a few things that you um, might want to consider, especially, you know, since the weather is getting warmer, just some, some fun ideas. But before we get started, I would just like to remind everyone, you are free to join me on Saturday. This Saturday, March 19th, I will be speaking um, at the ECE Circle Time International Symposium. You're free to join my room where I will be uh, sharing about early literacy. There are tons of other speakers who will be talking about a variety of early childhood topics. So if you are a parent looking to get support um, with your child's literacy or numeracy or social uh, development, come, you'll get great value. If you're a teacher who's looking to get support or if you're a teacher who's thinking about branching out and doing your own thing, there are people who will be speaking about how to start your own early childhood business. So go ahead and join us. It's a great group of early childhood professionals. Um, it is this Saturday. I believe it starts at 10 a.m. Um, I will be going, my room, my session starts at 11.15, I believe. Oh, I'll check. But I hope to see you all there. All right, so let's get to what we are here for today. Me <laughs> persuading you that teaching literacy does not have to be stressful, that it can be fun, and that you can persuade your children to learn their, their letter sounds and, and sight words and CVC words and blending and all these skills in a fun way. So in this article I have, it is about how to learn letter sounds. Now, I know at this point in the school year, I might be dating this video, but that's all right. At this point in the school year, most of us are done with individual letter sounds, but you may still have those kids who are struggling. Or this may be for a teacher who, you know, your class is just, they're just not there yet. And that's okay. We just need to make sure they get this skill. It's not about presenting information and rushing through a curriculum or a program. It's about making sure they actually master that skill. And that's all I'm here to help you do. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the ideas I have in this article. I will link the article as well for you. And uh, if you would like to go through and read it for yourself, grab some ideas, stick them in your lesson plans, you know how we do. You know, take it, modify it. A good teacher always borrows. <laughs> so well, at least I did. All right, so now that the weather is getting nice outside, at least it's gorgeous where I am. Um, it's still a little bit of chill, but the kids can put their jackets on. One thing you can do is a letter sound race with your kids, or you can even do it in your auditorium if need be. So what you can totally do is give, um, Put your kids in groups. I was always a fan of races because it got that energy out, right? Because your kids, they're starting to get antsy. They've been inside too long. Winter's a long time for them. Put your kids in groups and you can give them an object that begins with a specific letter. And that person has to, when you say go, run across and put it in whatever basket that matches that letter. So let's say, I'm gonna go with A because it's the first one on top of my head. And you give them a picture of an apple or a toy, um, a, a toy apple or alligator or whatever. They would have to run across 
when you say go and find the basket that it goes in and put it there and run back to the back of the line. And then the next person goes, you know, just like that. Simple, <laughs> simple, low prep. Use things that are already in your classroom. I mean, it can be anything um, as long as it's safe <laughs> for them to run with. Um, or it can be pictures of things that they, they, they put in a basket or on a board. Uh, it just it's a great way for them to really connect that sound of that object to that grapheme, that letter, and it's fun for them as well. So that's just one little quick idea. I mean, you could do this could even be, you know, we let's be honest, we all have those filler lessons. <laughs> this could be a filler lesson that is simple for you to prep. It still gets them to practice their skills and they will have such a ball. Like it would be so much fun. It could even be a treat, a treat activity. So try to think of um, activities that you can have in your bank as like treat activities that they will enjoy, but get them practicing specific skills. Tip. All right, another one that I like is you could go on a scavenger hunt. You could totally go on a scavenger hunt with your class. Um, give them the letter sounds that they need to find. And this is great because if you do this around the school or around your classroom or even outside, you could give everyone a clipboard, um, something to draw with, and what specific letter sounds, let's say there's four different letter sounds you're working on, give them um, super easy piece of paper, draw, have them draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. Now they have their four boxes and they write the letters in each box that they're looking for and they go off and find something that begins with that letter and they draw it. Simple. Like I am all about making things <laughs> as simple as possible. This could even be something you send home for them to do um, because this will allow them again to connect that letter sound with the things they see in their environment. All right, and for your kids who maybe they are a little bit advanced and you're maybe doing it as a whole class activity, you could have them try to spell it using their, their uh, phonics skills and I always love when they use their phonics skills to try and spell because it is the cutest spelling in the world <laughs> it's so cute um, but you'd be surprised what sounds they hear um, but that's another great simple like <laughs> I'm I, I'm winding down to to spring break or coming back from spring break you know great little activity you can do with them Another activity you can do, I'm scrolling through here to see which ones I like. Um, ah. All right, you know, swat the sound. I love this, this is super cute. I got this at the dollar store. You could totally have your kids use something like this or just a regular fly swatter to swat the sound. So you could put um, letters on, letters or pictures on a board and give them the, the, the uh, fly swatter or whatever and have them, and you say the sound and they have to swat the picture that begins with the sound, or you say the picture name and they have to swat the letter that that picture begins with. So either way, again, low prep for you, <laughs> super, super low prep, but it's stuff that gets them practicing. This can be a small group activity that they can do. This can actually even be, if you prep this right, you could make this a center activity where one child gets to be the caller and, and uh, another child gets to swat the letter. Um, it could be done on the carpet so it's not like loud, but you could totally prep this and have them, one child calling out the letter and the other child swatting. Super simple, easy, low prep. Um, and the last thing I'd like to show you is uh, an activity I have in my shop. So if you would like to use some printables in your classroom, which I love because once again, prep them once, have them forever. Um, 
I created these lovely learning links Acti this lovely learning links activity because I love I love these things they are so great I loved having them in my classroom because you could do so many things with them but the way this activity works is you would give these to your students again something they can do by themselves so you can be off doing whatever else with the other kids and they're over there <laughs> practicing their beginning sounds right so they would take let's say again we're working with letter A super simple they would take one of these put a link on it and then they would look for the pictures that begin with app like apple and link it what's another picture that begins with app and put another link I mean super simple right guys I, I love this ant right there could do another one Put another link like I, I just I think this is it's so easy and it's so fun and what I love about it is that it also helps them practice their fine motor skills I mean killing a couple birds with one stone always a good thing and we have a link of short uh, a of um, a and short a sound words uh, pictures here and you could put the the last one and then you know have the lowercase oops have the lowercase a and you have the complete link done and you could have them for I have them available for all letters of the alphabet so if you're interested in this I will also leave the link in um, uh, around this video depending upon where you watch it above or below but those are just a few ideas that I have in this blog post here and there are uh, lots more so I just was not gonna sit and go through all of it but I wanted to be sure to share more ideas of how you can make sure your kids are getting those phonics skills and phonemic awareness skills that they need to have because a lot of the articles we're reading is our kids are struggling and yes they were struggling before the pandemic and it's just going to be compounded but if we can take some of the stress out of learning the basics that they need to master to be able to read it will do them and us a world of good and parents if you were watching this you can use a lot of these at home as well you can also check out that blog post if you would like it's in the for teacher section but feel free um, let me check and see if there are any comments or questions and then I, that's it for today guys it was a nice quick video I don't see any questions or comments but thank you so much for joining me this has been great and I will be back with the video for my parents tomorrow and don't forget to join me on Saturday for the ECE uh, Circle Time International Symposium and check out yasarosearlylearning.com for uh, resources and this great blog posts that will help you get through <laughs> when you are running out of ideas. All right, I'll see you guys later.